risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God, the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us, for thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of thy people, Grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calleth us each by name, and follow where he doth lead, who with thee and the Holy Spirit liveth and reigneth one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now in Joppa there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with the request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning's appointed psalm, Psalm 23, we will read together in unison. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. 
and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from the Revelation to John. I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God, and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more, and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the springs of water of life and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe, because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. 
The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. These are the words that Jesus says to a crowd, demanding that he answer their questions. Is he really the Messiah? Why won't he just tell them? But Jesus has told them through his actions, though they don't believe him. They aren't his sheep, they don't hear his voice, and they don't follow him. He isn't their shepherd. The idea of God as a shepherd and us as his flock is not an uncommon metaphor in the Bible. In fact, it's so common, I sometimes find myself skimming past it in passages like Psalm 23, rather than deeply considering what it means. Psalm 23 is many different things to many different people. Some people like to focus on God's presence throughout our lives as a shepherd. Others like to emphasize the end when we dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Personally, I never really liked Psalm 23 as a kid. I had to memorize the King James Version in the fifth grade, and I had no idea what was going on with the language. Uh, so I had to lie to my teacher and say, I just forgot how to say, yay, though I walk. I, what is this word? Um, I'd like to pretend today that we're just as unfamiliar with this psalm as I was then and read through it as a description of a journey. God, who provides us with so much abundance that we lack nothing, finds vibrant green pastures where we can rest. We can lie down and contentedly relax with no fear and no anxiety as our shepherd guards us. The water, so often a symbol of chaos in the Hebrew Bible, is still and calm. It isn't dangerous, and it won't wash away what God has built. And it's hard for me to imagine this kind of calm, because I worry about so many things, half of which are inconsequential, and being able to rest without worry sounds like a dream come true to me. Not only does our shepherd guide us to places where we can rest in perfect peace, the shepherd leads us through right pathways. Here, the word for pathways is sometimes translated as tracks or ruts, like those left behind by the repeated passage of an ox cart. God takes us along these right pathways again and again and again and forms us in the way that God desires. But our journey is not always peaceful or easy. The journey is not all green pasture and still waters and right pathways. There are painful and scary places on the journey, places that earn the name the Valley of the Shadow of Death. And here our journey through the psalm is interrupted. Psalm 23 contains one of the most important concepts, I think, for growing or maturing faith. The Lord is my shepherd, even if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. In our reading from Acts, we see a community traveling through this valley. A woman named Tabitha has died. Not just any woman, but one known for her love and care for her community. And not just one who cared for those around her, but one who cared especially for the widows at the margins of her society. An act so important that it's described in James 1.27 as part of religion that is pure and undefiled before God. When Peter arrives in Joppa, 
The widow's mourning Tabitha take him to the room where they laid her body, and through their tears, they show him the garments that she handmade them, because they want Peter to know what she meant to them. They want him to know how much she cared for them. And it isn't hard to imagine what they felt as a pillar of their community fell ill and died. We know what it is to lose someone like Tabitha. In March of last year, I traveled to Mississippi, where I'm from, for a work trip. And while I was there, my first home church, the church where I was baptized, held the funeral of a woman like Tabitha. And rather than widows, she worked with the youth group of the church. And she'd been doing so since the 80s. So youth ministers came and went. I, I was one of those youth ministers who came and went. And in their absence, she kept the youth group from falling apart. Half of the church called her by the same nickname used by her grandchildren, and she treated most of us like we were her grandchildren. And as I waited in line to speak with her family before the funeral, I could hear some of the people telling her family how much she'd cared for them and what she'd meant to them. Both of these communities passed through the valley of the shadow of death. Two different flocks separated by time and space, but guided by the same shepherd. In the reading from Revelation, we see another community of believers, this time from every nation, tribe, people, and language. And this crowd worships Christ, the Lamb of God. These believers have come out of the great ordeal. They've washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. Christians in the time that Revelation was written are being persecuted. And Nero, one Roman emperor, blames them for the great fire in Rome in 64 AD. Domitian, likely ruling when Revelation was written, is trying to revive worship of the emperor as a god. But why are Christians being persecuted? Well, here are some phrases applied to the Roman emperors. The Carthaean people honor the god and emperor and savior of the inhabited world, Gaius Julius Caesar. Emperor Caesar Augustus, son of God. Emperor Caesar Augustus, God from God. Nero Caesar, the Lord. Nero Claudius Caesar, the savior and benefactor of the inhabited world. The good God of the inhabited world, the beginning and existence of all good things. Some of those are word for word phrases that we use for Christ. A lot of them are very similar to ideas that we apply to Christ. Referring to Jesus as Lord and Son of God in the first century is a dangerous, radical statement. It's a rejection of Caesar as the ultimate authority. And as you can imagine, the Roman emperors did not particularly like that. The shadow of death at the hands of Rome falls over John and the churches to whom he writes. In writing Revelation, John tries to comfort his fellow believers. He reminds them that those they've lost to martyrdom are sheltered in the presence of God. They're safe, never to hunger or thirst again, never to feel the searing heat of the sun on a burning hot day. Instead, the Lamb, the Lord, is their shepherd who will guide them to springs of water of life. And so we return to the psalm, having passed through the shadow, valley of the shadow of death. In the first few verses of the psalm, God is referred to in the third person. The Lord is my shepherd. He makes me lie down. That changes after we travel through the valley of the shadow of death. You are with me, Psalm 23 says. Contrasting Psalm 22's lament of, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Instead, Psalm 23 says, your rod and your staff, the tools of the shepherd for guiding and protecting their flock, comfort me. I won't say that the psalmist meant to link experiencing evil and the shadow of death with familiarity with God, but I doubt the psalmist would disagree. Personally, I found that those times when I'm going through the valley of the shadow of death are the times that I find myself turning to God the most in places, in times when maybe I've forgotten or, or started to think less of my devotion. Those times when I feel that shadow are the times that I feel my need for God the most. 
God, in the presence of sickness and death, of state-sanctioned violence and oppression, and all forms of evil, takes the time to spread a table before us. God's abundant care is still present in the valley of the shadow of death. And as Jesus tells us in the gospel, no one can take us from his hand. God's mercy and goodness pursue us throughout our lifelong journey. And John sees the end of that journey where we find our dwelling in the house of the Lord. While our earthly lives might be full of unmet needs and unfulfilled desires, the heavenly community lacks nothing with the lamb as their shepherd. We suffer from broken relationships at every scale from national to familial, but the heavenly community is united and healed of those fractures. Their praise rejects imperial claims of the day and instead attributes first blessing, glory, and wisdom to God and last honor and power and might. In the middle of their praise, they give God thanksgiving and we join them in that heavenly thanksgiving in the Eucharist. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being, Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church in the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people. Receive these our prayers which we offer unto thine divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. And to all thy people, 
give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Lord, in your mercy. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear authority of government in this and every land, especially Joseph, our president, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. We remember those in the military, especially those who have been deployed. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that, rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. Receive our thanks for all who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. Lord, in thy mercy. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We pray for peace in all places of violence and war, especially in Ukraine, and for all those whose lives are devastated by poverty, injustice, disease, or disaster. And we ask for thy loving presence and peace to be with refugees in our local communities and around the world. Be with our good SAM team as we strive to enact thy will in our welcome and support of a family through Bridge Refugee Services. Receive our prayers for all those on our prayer list, especially our parishioners, the wider community of our family and friends, and all those we now name before thee, and those we hold in our hearts. Ed and Mona Ray, Anne, Anne. Claudia, Claudia, Beverly, Beverly Kathy, Kathy, Gail, Gail Doug, Doug, Bertie, Bertie Clark, Peg, Ed, Ed, Bonnie, Marge, Patrick and Susan, Aaron, Matthew, Melissa, Carol, Ann, Carolyn and Vaughn, Brad, Alita, Lee and Mike, Fisher, Megan, Krissa, John, Nancy, the Richards family, Eleanor, Mark, Roger, Dave, Dicey, Alice, Michelle, Bill and family, and Pharaoh. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy fear, faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of all thy saints that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Grant our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. If I have a seat. It's great to see you all this morning. Um, and uh, just uh, kind of a heads up some things going on today. It's, it's along with being Mother's Day, uh, which is very important, right? 
Um, it's also graduation Sunday, and at the later service, we will have uh, some of our young people uh, say a few words, uh, as is our um, custom here. We have eight high school graduates uh, this year, and five of them will speak. Um, three of them chose not to. Uh, in your insert, uh, in your bulletin, there's a little insert with a little bit about the three who aren't going to speak. So if you want to find out about the others, there's a really cool way that you can do that. Um, after the 10 o'clock service is posted, so that's probably like 11.15 or so, um, you can go and click on uh, our link uh, on the website and watch the sermon from the later service and see what the kids had to say. So um, so invite you uh, to do that. Um, I, while the kids this year uh, that are graduating are gonna have what we might think of as a little more normal graduation. Um, certainly the last two years of their high school have been very strange and different, so um, invite you to, to keep them in your prayers um, as they uh, look forward to, to summer and the things that are next for each one of them. So I uh, want to invite you to uh, fill out a survey uh, about uh, potential capital campaign projects. And I've gotten a little feedback from some of you. There was a little confusion about the survey. And so, so just, just so you know, the, um, the intent of the survey is to see if we can sort of connect some of these projects with our core values um, and see them as um, necessary for our ministry and our mission. It's not sort of voting for which ones you have a preference for, which is fine. Um, and if we continue with the process, we'll do that sort of in the next phase, try to prioritize projects. This is merely to look at that and say, hey, is this, um, does this fit with our core values? Core values of love, active caring, and servanthood. Now, some of those can be a challenge, like um, repairing the parking lot. Love, kind of caring, service. Um, but if you look at um, our worship on Sundays as being absolutely essential to our mission and ministry, right, and our life together, for us to do that, there needs to be a place for people to park. And, and most of you want a, a nice, smooth place to park where when people get out of their cars, they're not rocking, walking from, you know, on a, on a nice, even surface. So, anyway, all of, all of that can be included, right, in service but love. So, but just an awareness, um, I know some of it's not easy, but it is, the, the attempt at this point is to try to connect projects with our core values. So if you'd like to do a do-over, <laughs> you're welcome to do that. In, in one of the box at the end, you might try to identify if you didn't put your name on your first one. Um, you know, put your name there and then let somebody know, hey, with more instruction, I'd like to use this survey rather than the first one you submitted. Diaper drive, uh, one of the items that we will do uh, in Nashville with the mission trip is the diaper drive, and we were invited to uh, participate in that either with diapers or with uh, money, gift cards, all that kind of thing. Next Sunday, uh, after the 10 o'clock service, we're gonna have a children and youth celebration uh, complete with an ice cream truck. And um, parents and adults are, are welcome to, to join the fun. So feel free to bring some lawn chairs or blanket, something like that. May 22nd, Good Sam Sunday and Bishop Brian Cole's visitation with us. Um, knowing what the last two years have been, we have about seven folks who have joined this community over the last two years will be received, confirmed, baptized, um, and we have a few who will be reaffirmed, reaffirming their baptism vows. So, um, exciting day for that. There's no prayer shawl ministry today. Cash in the plate this morning will go to the Interfaith Health Clinic. Interfaith Health Clinic provides accessible, affordable, and quality health care services to low-income working people in our community who lack health care insurance. Since its opening in 1991, they have served over 24,000 
patients and provided over 300,000 patient encounters. Uh, they offer medical and dental care, mental health counseling, prescription services, and other health-related items, including testing and uh, COVID testing and vaccinations. Donations can be made by cash in the plate or a check marked Interfaith Health or by giving through the online portal. Last week's offering of $544 was given to the Episcopal churches in the Sudan. Thank you for your generosity. All that we are and all that we have comes from God. Let us offer our best to God in thanksgiving, remembering that God loves a cheerful gift. All things come of thee, O Lord. Continuing with the great thanksgiving on page 333 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. But chiefly are we bound to praise thee for the glorious resurrection of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and hath taken away the sin of the world, who by his death hath destroyed death, and by his rising to life again hath won for us everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, 
and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the peace. Alleluia. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh. 
flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died and was raised for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries of the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us that by of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are buried members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, 
to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the name of our risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen. 